So formally, uh, good evening to all of you. Many of you are joining from different parts of uh, the Gulf countries. So <laughs> there we are in a different time zone altogether. So that's why I had to specify that we'll be starting at 6 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Right, so uh, formally a very good uh, evening to all of you. And I'm happy that so many of you are attending this webinar to understand how we can gamify uh, mathematics. Not only mathematics, actually we can gamify any <laughs> subject and to make the classes interesting because you know that children are so, uh, it is very difficult to control them in the classes because 40, 50 of them there and the lecture method will not work anymore. And with the new national education policy, experiential learning, differentiated learning, PBL, so many methodologies that are coming, I think uh, gamification of maths is very, very, very important right from class one, uh, maybe from the nursery KG also, but I am today dealing with only KG uh, one to 10. Right. So uh, we start with the session for today. And as I have told that in case uh, you can always stop and ask questions at any point of time. So the main crux of today is how to make your math classes interesting. Because unless you create interest, children, you know, have the span of attention for today's kids. <laughs> how many minutes? Seven minutes, eight minutes. Without that, uh, you will not be able to catch their attention. Older kids, of course, a little more, maybe 15 minutes. But the younger kids today are so restless. The reason being because they are into a technical age. They are into uh, Facebook and social media. They'll post a photograph, their instant gratification. They require instant gratification. So when they post something, they need likes on that. If there is no likes on that uh, post, then they'll get depressed, right? So same thing happens in the classroom. They are, uh, they are playing video games, which are so fast. You know, it's about shooting and car racing, everything was so fast. And when we are doing our lectures in the class, what happens is that they are not able to relate to that process of verbal communication. That's the biggest problem. But when, as soon as you see the body language of kids will uh, change as soon as they're out. Look at the pictures that they have selected. You know, somebody playing with sand dune, somebody is on the grass. The body language of all kids will change as soon as you are out. Or you give them some games or toys or something else rather than the normal uh, what goes on in the class. They're very, very happy. So that is what the aim of today is that how to make your maths classes interesting and how to make it lively so that your kids are going to enjoy your classes. So first of all, every topic that you take needs to be related to real life because the common problem that we face is that uh, kids always ask, sir or ma'am, why do we study this? Where are we going to where are we going to use this in the real life? That's the biggest problem. So we need to learn that everything has got some historical background. We need to know about some mathematicians, how it was discovered, what was the process. It will be easy for us to explain things uh, to uh, kids when they know the real life explanation of that. Now see, this is a simple picture of snowflakes falling, but every snowflake is different. Every, it has got mathematical shapes, right? And there's a very beautiful uh, site, which I'll be telling you in the end, that is many of you must be using it, www.geogibra.org. Many, I'm sure that many educators are already using this. Uh, uh, it's a very good site to explain all concepts, basically from uh, at the elementary school to the middle school to the high school, right? So that's why we are concentrating on this one to 10. So this is a very good site. If you're not using it, please do use it. And I will be demonstrating a little bit towards the end so that I can cover what I have prepared uh, first. And then I will show you, show you uh, what happens in this website and how we can uh, take a live demo of uh, congruency, similarity, Pythagoras theorem, simple addition concept, greater than, less than. So all levels we can demonstrate that square rectangle everything you know like uh, can be demonstrated shown to the kids right so uh, we move on further to concrete examples uh, now see <laughs> i have put something and there is something unusual about this uh, what is the unusual thing that you notice about this slide what is unusual about this slide? Can anyone tell me? You can unmute yourself and tell. What is unusual it's about this? Upside down. <laughs> yes. It's upside down, yeah. sir. It's upside down, right? It's written upside so, down, right? Traditional yeah. so, thought: math is boring and tough. Absolutely. So there is a traditional way of looking at things. So the moment you see this slide, uh, it's not traditional, right? Because the tradition is to put everything in order. 
right? So I have personally seen, now suppose you also do this experiment, you call children to the board and say, draw a triangle. Most of them will draw a triangle like this in the same manner because the traditional thought is like that. Now, how many different types of triangles are there? We have right angle triangles, we have acute angle triangle, we have obtuse angle triangles, but very rarely you will find somebody drawing a right angle triangle or an obtuse angle triangle. Everybody will more or less draw an acute angle triangle. You can try out this uh, uh, and uh, you can check for this uh, yourself. So uh, uh, this is one thing that uh, it's very, uh, you know, the traditional way. So traditional way is something which uh, is, uh, we need to break away from that. So similarly, like for example, we call the students, everyone will do something very traditionally. And when you break the, from the tradition, okay, uh, the moment we write something like that, one day you go and write the topic upside down, you will find a lot of reaction. So otherwise they will not react. Okay, you will go and write that today's topic is addition. But uh, if you uh, make one spelling error there, or you know, you will uh, write it upside down, immediately the children will get excited. Sir, ma'am, you have done this wrong. Okay, so I've got your attention now. So that's a traditional thought. The traditional thought is maths is boring and maths is tough, right? So we need to break traditions and we need to move from there, right? So, uh, yeah, one second, okay, yeah. So just a reminder, some people are messaging that uh, uh, the, they are not able to join, etc. Please remember, I have disabled all the security, this thing. So if you find that there is any problem, uh, please don't worry. Uh, you need, you can just exit and enter whenever you, you are having any network issues or anything like that. Uh, kindly uh, exit and enter that if you're able to not hear or whatever it is, right? So please make sure that uh, I have not put any restrictions I have not put any restrictions, so you can enter and exit at any point of time. Thank you. So uh, kindly do not message me because I, I will not be able to see. It is better that, uh, you know, I will be seeing off and on only because I'm concentrating on the webinar right now. So very difficult to concentrate the chats here, conduct the session and see the WhatsApp message too. Okay, so kindly excuse uh, if I don't see your message. Right, <clears throat> so how to gamify our classes? How to gamify our classes? There are lots and lots of traditional ways. Again, I'm, uh, there is a traditional way. So if you go to the traditional ways, what happens is that you will get the list. Okay, you do, uh, there are, these are the apps which can be used, or uh, this is how we do it. That's, that's what Google tells you. But actually what happens is that over a period of time, the children get bored with that. Okay, you try to use Kahoot quizzes. You use uh, any other uh, apps. Initially, they'll be excited. After four or five times, they will say, okay, this is not interesting, sir, or interesting. So what will happen is that we need to devise methods by which uh, each chapter is very unique from the other. That's important. Okay. So how do we go do that? By giving concrete examples. Now I'm going to share concrete examples that uh, I have done and my students have done and how they're using it in real life. That is very important because what happens is uh, in real life are all these maths that we do in school uh, is it really practical? That's a big question mark. But I'm going to show how people are doing it. I mean, some of the students who have done all this, I have clicked uh, pictures of what they do, and I'm going to share it with you so that you can, you can also you know show it to your students. See, this is what uh, uh, people are doing with uh, the basic maths. It's not very high five maths, very basic maths. So concrete examples will always uh, help children to understand. Okay, so why do we study this? Uh, trigonometry, why do we study similar triangles or congruency or anything, you know, so we need to give concrete examples. Hello. So how do we give this concrete examples? Uh, now uh, I'm going concrete. to talk that in detail. Okay, so I think somebody's mic is on, it will be better if you are on mute, unless you want to ask a question, you are most welcome to unmute yourself. Yeah, thank you. Because it will disturb others. Thank you. So, uh, yeah. So creativity and engagement. So the most important thing is to engage students. Students become very restless. They can't sit down there 40 minutes uh, doing nothing. You are talking, talking, talking and doing nothing. Uh, they are not doing anything. You are prepared for something and you want to vomit out that content, right? So that's important that we engage them. How? By giving some uh, puzzles, worksheet, crosswords. So all that I will be telling you in concrete. Now I'm just giving you the headings. So how to engage. Engagement is very important for joyful learning. If, if the students are not engaged in anything, practical work, 
Okay, some people think that practicals is only for nine to 12. We can start practical right from class one. Some people think that case studies is only for nine to 12. Case studies can be done from class one onwards. With concrete examples, as we proceed further, I'll be showing this, uh, how to go about it, right? Allow students to make their own problems. This is very, very important and they get excited. Now, see, or we give questions, they answer. But when they make their own questions with their names, okay, suppose there is a student named Ajay, he's studying in class four. And the teacher says, Ajay, why don't you make a question uh, on profit and loss? So he will frame the question, Ajay goes to a shop to buy a pen costing rupees 20, okay? And he sells it for 30, find the profit, find the loss symbol. So when they are making questions and giving it to others, they get excited, I am making the question, and you know, their name is there for smaller kids, it works. When you're putting their names, oh, your name has come in that question. You know, they, that excitement is that. So pick up some students name from the, not the traditional names which are given in the book. So you can always make your classes interesting by picking up the, let's say the naughtiest person in your class who normally disturb and suddenly he is the star attraction on the class. Okay, I have a Shivansh in my class, very naughty fellow. And then I will say, Shivansh goes to the market to buy and suddenly Shivansh who is, you know, troubling others, he is very excited and listening of the questions about it. And everybody, Shivansh, Shivansh, you know, so he becomes the center of attraction and he is listening. So this is one of the method, engaging. So, so that otherwise what will happen? Why do these children disturb? Because they're not interested. So as soon as they have made the center of attraction, suddenly they'll feel excited. Not in that class. Next class also they are waiting. Sir may take my name or ma'am may take my name in that question. Okay, so uh, engage the students and encourage the students to make questions like that. Changing names will not change the concepts, right? So why worry about names? Whether it is their name or somebody else's name. So why should we insist on the name? They can make their own names so, they, so that it becomes more interesting for them. For the smaller kids, this works a lot. And encourage project-based learning. This we are already started, art integrated learning. I'll talk more about that because that's a huge topic and uh, you know how to integrate art and uh, uh, into our maths. So everything can be integrated into art forms and then it becomes more beautiful. Music, I'll be showing some example how to integrate music, art uh, and uh, you know role plays, uh, the, uh, the play modeling, all these different forms, drama, etc. right? So make it hands-on, never uh, be theoretical. So if you are attending a workshop and uh, suppose I decide that I'm going to talk for the next one and a half hours and I will not allow you to speak, I'll put you on mute, how will you feel? Very bold, half of the half of you may leave also. Now you have the option of unmuting yourself and answering the questions any point of time. So that gives you a little bit of freedom and that you can participate whenever you want. So some teachers, what they do is that let me complete the session, then you will ask questions. They don't like students asking questions. Why? There are two reasons. Why when students ask questions, first of all, they don't know the answers. They are not confident. They are not prepared uh, about that. Or they, it disturbs the flow, especially younger teachers who are not prepared. Or even older teachers, nothing about young and old. If you're not prepared for a class, what happens is that your flow gets, <laughs> your flow is not there. So you have prepared that for 20 minutes. Okay, let me finish that, blah, 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 blah. Okay, now you ask questions. And by the time, you know, the child's question must have disappeared or he may not be interested. So allow the children to, you know, ask questions. Asking questions is one of the best ways to judge the quality of a teacher. Because if you are encouraging questions, that means you are a confident teacher. Ask any questions and I'll get back to you. And not necessary that you know, be humble enough to accept, okay, better you've asked this question. I don't know this answer, I'll find out tomorrow and tell you. Okay, it's better to don't give wrong answers. Okay, that you, you should be courageous and brave enough to accept that because no teacher will know everything. But at the same time, don't discourage. Nobody will ask me questions. You are disturbing me and then the child is branded. That should not happen. So this is one way where we can end. You see, initially when the kids are small, they will have a thousand questions, isn't it? When they are one year, two year, three year old, what is this, how it is made, this, this. As they grow older, you know, people start, uh, don't allow them to, uh, you are asking too many questions. You shut up and it is like that. You accept like this. Why is the grass green? It is like that. They may not, the parents may not know the answer. <laughs> the teachers may not know the answer. So they will say, you don't, you are just disturbing. You go and find out from here and there. And what will happen? Continuously, when the child is not allowed to ask questions, they will never ask questions. And that's the problem with the Indian education system that we don't allow our children to ask questions. Uh, uh, a majority of the cases, what happens is the teacher is 
uh, not encouraging them. So we as maths teachers, especially our subject is, you know, they like, in Hindi we call it badnam hua padha, you know, as because they say that, you know, maths is the toughest subject, maths is, uh, we don't have aptitude, everything is about maths, right? The other subjects they more or less <laughs> get through and maths teachers are the dreaded people. They are the ghosts of the school, you know. So we have to change that image. And how do we change that image? By making people love maths. So we ourselves need to change our tactics. We ourselves need to uh, build a rapport with the students and uh, kids will feel uh, uh, attached to you if you make your classes interesting. And once you they like you, they will start enjoying the subject, okay? Don't force them to, this is very important. You have no choice, but to learn maths up to class 10, 11, you can make a choice. That's, I've heard many teachers saying that, okay? Up to 10, there is no choice, so better study. So these are the things that uh, normally <laughs> we, including me, I am not uh, different from you, including me, traditional answers. So we need to change from that. So uh, we need to make that into interactive classes. Okay, so here is an example of uh, 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 somebody, a teacher who's sitting down and they're working in groups and also uh, making uh, the preparing for the lessons. Now preparing for the lessons is not our chronicle alone. Look at the teaching aids that they are making. So you can make charts for your class. Okay, visual aids, because many children are visual. The moment you bring a chart, they are excited. Oh, today ma'am has got a chart. If you're just good going there with nothing, then oh, this is a normal class. Or you prepare some uh, PPT. Now, since there is a lot of online classes, preparation of PPT. And now, even if you go to school, if you have a, a projector in your class, you can project those PPTs. Visual learning is very, very important and very easy for children to understand rather than seeing our boring faces every day day and night, 365 days of the year, it'll be better that the learning takes place in a multi-dimension way, right? So charts, visuals, videos, uh, photo story, you know, you create uh, small uh, visuals with photo story, Microsoft photo story, it's a good app uh, to, uh, you know, uh, for smaller kids especially, create a story, okay? Through story, make keyword problems, okay? They, they'll be interested, oh, ma'am, today there is no maths class, today there is a story, and Indirectly, at the end of that, you will put a question. Okay, this guy went to the shop and this happened, this happened. You will frame those questions and put five questions to the child. Okay, so the children are interested. They listen to the story. And then what is happening? You are putting up four or five questions based on that. It's, it's like a case study. So in higher classes, in case study, what happens? It becomes a very serious affair. In smaller kids, uh, we can show videos and then ask uh, questions on that, right? So that I'll be demonstrating also some uh, through some videos. Okay, so everyone likes to play games. That is a fact. Children's body language are different when they go out. So if you are allowing them to, today is free period, go and play. Oh my God, they'll jump and, you know, howl and play. At that. So in the classroom, we can have so many games. So some of them I'm going to uh, discuss today, uh, which you can put in your game. So as I promised, I will be giving you a lot of games, but at the same time, depending on your class, you'll have to modify that as per your classes. Okay. So uh, the one of the common ways in which uh, we can teach multiples or tables is ping pong. Okay, so ping pong is like, for example, uh, uh, you are having 40 students in the class. Many of you must have already played. So I will start with, let's say, number one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's the normal way of, uh, you know, numbering, right? So instead of doing one, two, three, four, now what happens is that the moment one, you will say, then two, Every multiple of two, the child has to say ping. Okay, so one, two, two is ping, and every multiple of three is pop. So multiple means the tables of two and three. So as the, uh, uh, so for example, you're doing tables of two and three now. So roll number one will say one. The next uh, child who is sitting, they will say not two, they will say ping. Three will say pong. What will four say? Ping, ping, he'll ping, say ping. Correct. Four will say ping and five will say pong. No, five will not say pong. Oh, five, five will say, say five the itself. number itself. The number itself. Yeah. Yeah. Because five is neither <laughs> a multiple of two. Six will become any guesses? Pong, 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 pong. Ping, pong, ping, pong. Ah, pong. exactly, ma'am. So six will ping become pong. ping pong. Why? Because oh, it's a multiple actually. of two as well as three. So the child will, so what is very interesting now. So one, Two will, they'll not say two, they will say ping, then will come pong, then what will happen, they'll say, uh, instead of four, they will say ping, five will remain, five as it is, six becomes ping pong, seven as it is, eight will become ping, nine will become pong, pong. 
ten will become ping, eleven will become eleven uh, as it 11. is, twelve will become ping pong. Again, ping, ping pong. pong. Okay, so what will happen? The children will really enjoy, especially the. I'm not now, hello. So as the kids are going to, uh, as the uh, if whatever classes you are dealing with. So if you are dealing with very small kids, we can do it two, three. Okay, the same can be done with multiples of five, six, seven, eight. So with bigger classes. So depending on the class, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, you know where the tables. Accordingly, we can do that. bigger kids will do One, two, three, four becomes ping. Five becomes pong. Then six, seven, eight. We are doing multiples of four. Eight becomes your ping. Nine, as it is, ten becomes pong. Eleven, as it is, twelve will become ping. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen will become pong. Like that, what will happen is that you can create games of any multiple. So the moment it's a common multiple of the two numbers. Then what will happen? You will have to say ping pong. So if you are doing for three four, your twelve will become ping pong. Okay, so that's a that's a a game that can be done with smaller kids to learn tables, and they're going to enjoy. You can do this over and over again with different uh, numbers. So uh, second is Sudoku. Simple Sudokus can be created, not the ones which are printed. Simple Sudokus can be created because this is this is all something which. So even for this ping pong being, they do really think. Of what they have to say, and they are very excited when then uh, they are actually there is a uh, there is a fear of what they are going to say, and there is excitement. Fear not because of the wrong answer, because of the excitement. They are very excited what it will be, and uh, nobody wins or loses this game. It's a participating game. In all these games, remember there is no winner or loser because otherwise the crux of the people will not be able to enjoy. If you create tension, if you create competition, the idea is that everybody enjoys, right? Uh, Sudoku is uh, uh, you already know that nine square. You can um, as per your class make it very simple, and probably at the end of your class, sometimes what happens are topics are uh, finished and ten uh, minutes are left. You can give a Sudoku on the board and ask them to complete it. Math race is something very good. Math race is like something like uh, for example, uh, uh, if you take them to the ground or anywhere, you can uh, do. And what happens is that uh, let's say um, uh, there is a uh, a uh, 40 minute period and you say okay 20 minutes i have taught you this now i am going to give you a very simple question uh, based on what i have taught all those who are doing this uh, uh, question for they can do whatever work they want okay so what happens is that as soon as they complete their work their work is over and they are free so they, they get a free period or if you are taking them to the field you create a physical race okay what is the race they will run for let's say 50 meters Uh, they are putting their notebook and pen there and you have put a sum there and they are solving the sum and then they are running ahead so what is happening for smaller kids this is an excitement they are running also and the excitement also to do that sum okay so it could be simple sum don't give very tough sums it could be like just like 32 plus 23 depending on the class i'm saying not very complicated sums that you 20 minutes <laughs> he is sitting down in the ground and solving no something which is like which you have taught and some basic stuff like that bounce ball questions very good again for the elementary level uh, you can uh, create a circle uh, if there is space in your class or take them out and uh, bounce ball question uh, you know your uh, the ball is passed to any student okay suppose there is a student nikhil and you throw that ball okay nikhil and you ask him a question very simple question then nikhil throws to uh, nikhil throws it back to the teacher the teacher will take another uh, person's name and there will be some question so bounce ball questions children really enjoy for smaller kids uh, smaller then dice is very good uh, uh, it's easy to procure dice and what you need is two dice with and one dice with mathematical operations so mathematical operation means on the six side there should be the four operation plus minus division multiplication and uh, uh, then if they are older kids you can put square root symbol cube root symbol and all that depending on what right so two dice uh, two dice are there and then what happens you are rolling the dice start with the four basic operation you are rolling the dice on one dice the number 6 comes 
on another uh, dice number six comes and in between there is a dice which has got the mathematical operations so that could be plus so you will ask the child what is six plus six they will tell you 12 or six into six 36 so three dice we'll throw and we'll get the answer that is the uh, uh, dice estimation believe me uh, uh, dear friends that estimation is very very important in today's times and you will be surprised that students have no idea of estimation today the majority of them if you tell them what is the they will know everything about meter centimeter inches everything and you ask them what is the height of this classroom uh, many of them will not be able to even guess estimation is very poor or i have a glass of water what is the volume of water in that and what are we doing all this maths for if they can't estimate because math one of the basic aims of maths is estimation so we need to give them a, a, a sense, a perception of idea. And how do we do that? Okay, uh, what could be the approximate weight of this? You are picking up a glass of water. You are picking up a mobile phone. Something which is there. You are picking up a, a pencil box. A what is the weight of this? Uh, what is the volume of this? What is the height of this? What is the length of your table? Okay, they, you start with the table because they are sitting there. Okay, what do you think, boys, are, uh, uh, children? What do you think is the length of the table? Okay, they will analyze it. I think the length of the table is uh, 24 inches. Okay, uh, tell them to convert into centimeter. Okay, then they will say how to do it. They're wondering how to do it. You may give a hint. Okay, your big scale is 12 inches. It has got 30 centimeter. Okay, 60 centimeter. Okay, you think that your benches are 60 centimeter. Now measure. Now measure. And what is going to happen? It may come 70, it may come 80, or it may come 50, and somebody may be coming close to that also. So there is, they get a sense of recognition. Okay, my estimation was correct. And when you do this activity for a lot, for many days, what will happen? They'll come, they'll start, their estimation becomes very good because that's very important. Because nowadays, if you ask kids, what is the height of this building? They'll give vague answers, which has no meaning at all, okay? Because they don't imagine what is a meter, what is a feet, what is a centimeter. Imagination is not there. They are just blindly converting. One meter is 100 centimeter without knowing what is one meter, what is one centimeter, what is one inch. So it's very important estimation. Give a lot of questions on weight, volume, and uh, length, area, perimeter. All this can be done on their benches. They are sitting on a bench. You find, tell them to find the area. Have you ever done? Uh, you will give lots of questions uh, on the board. But uh, the best is... Uh, students, can you measure the estimate first? Length and breadth of the table. Okay, this is the estimation. Okay, now you compare and now you tell me what will be the area of the desk? What will be the perimeter? So they are actually doing, they'll find it interesting. And the, uh, you don't have to even take them out, whatever is that. It could be with a pencil box, it could be with a desk, whatever. Stand and sing. This is also a very, very interesting game. So suppose what happens is children know after sitting down, <laughs> they'll get bored. So every time you will find one fellow roaming around in the class, especially with the smaller kids, I think. I'm sure those who are teaching in primary, you will find. Making them sit down at one place is actually difficult and it's unnatural for kids, right? Because they, they have the habit of moving around. Now when they come back to school, it will become all the more difficult because they have, they have not sat in a classroom for one whole year. So standing and sitting, very good to break the monotony of your classes. What can be done? Okay. Uh, I am doing a question and this, this, this. Okay. So you will give an MCQ question now. How many of you think that 2x is a binomial? <clears throat> okay. I'm just giving you an example. How many of you think that 2x is a binomial? Stand up. How many of you think <clears throat> that 2 plus 2 is 4? Stand up. How many of you think that uh, 3 plus 5 is 8? Stand up. Okay, so what will happen? There will be standing and sitting. There will be some uh, activity in the class. So any questions you can give and you can do this stand and sit. So you will have to prepare a series of questions. Let's say seven, eight questions. And then in every question, you can uh, ask them. If you know this answer, stand. If you don't know this answer, uh, uh, sit. And there will be some fellows, remember, who will never stand. They will sit down continuously. So you'll have to make a note of uh, those kids who are not participating at all. And then you will ask them, what do you think about this? Yes, you're, you're not standing for anything. What is your opinion? You, uh, you know, then they will feel, ah, ma'am is watching me that I am not standing in any of these. Okay. So you have to uh, uh, ask questions, make them stand and sit. Right. <clears throat> okay. Learning from nature. This is the most, uh, I think the yeah. best yeah. form of learning is from nature. There cannot be any other learning uh, 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 that cannot happen from nature. Early, even if you look at the early Greeks, where did they learn everything? From nature. 
Uh, they didn't have technology at that time, 2000 years, 3000. We studied the same ge geometry that the Greeks gave 2000 years back, Euclid, Pythagoras. Uh, do you think they had advanced technology and computers to do this? They had only raw brains to think. And they did everything on sand, probably. Paper, pen never existed at that point of time. So learning from nature, what happens in nature? All the science and maths that is existing today is happening in nature. Okay. So you uh, take them out <clears throat> for a stroll. Okay, what do you see? You see a school building. What do you see? Windows. What are the shapes of this? Uh, you, you are seeing a dome in this picture. You can show pictures also. If you are uh, not convenient, if your school doesn't allow to take them outside. Uh, for smaller kids, I'm sure the school allow. But for bigger kids, because of XYZ reasons, some schools may not allow. Show them pictures. Okay, what do you see in this? That's a beautiful building. Tell some historical facts about the building. They will get interested. Oh, now you will come to the question. Look at that dome. What do you think is the shape of that dome? What is the shape of that uh, base? Okay. So suppose if 100 people are sitting in that, how much of air per person, uh, uh, you know, air will one person get? You can make questions on that. So a lot of questions can be devised based on questions uh, which they see from nature. Another very good, uh, when you're teaching geometry for the first time, when do you teach geometry uh, at the first time? I think from the very elementary classes, there is a basic concept of geometry uh, from at least from class four, five, six, they continuously keep on talking about geometry. Now, <clears throat> uh, this is another game, Simon says. Now, si whatever Simon says, you have to do, okay? So it's like a clock, okay? The clock is there. And then if suppose uh, 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 the, you say 80 degrees, okay? So 80 degrees means with the arms, you'll have to show 80 degrees. All the children have to show 80 degrees because many children are getting confused between acute angles and obtuse angles. So they, if you are measuring with the protector, what happens? They don't know whether 80 is from the right side or 80 is from the left side. It's a common problem. That's because they don't know acute and obtuse. So when this game is practiced, uh, geometrical angle, so 90 degrees, they know exactly 90 degrees is, I have to uh, be exactly like this. I am acute means my angle has to be less. Okay, I'm showing you uh, uh, this way. So acute means small angle, uh, obtuse means this is a straight angle. So you'll have to explain with the arms. I am showing with just arms, but they can do it with their hands because they are small kids. So they can show with arms. So the teacher will just announce an angle. So 40 degrees. So everyone, again, estimation. What is 40 degrees approximately? They should know. Like as teachers, we know, no? when we give geometric question, construct 40, we don't measure with a protractor. We know, okay, this is 40. If somebody has made 70, we'll easily know that it's not 40. Same way kids should understand that. Yes, so I'm going to the next part of the session. Make models. Uh, uh, model making is very, very important for the kids in real life. And uh, unless they make that model, and we are talking in air about prisms and pyramids and cubes and cuboids and cylinders and cones, show them these things because these are very uh, important that children understand. Okay, the common things, you can bring an ice cream cone to the class. Okay, they'll get very excited. Ice cream cone. Okay, this is what a cone is. Show them. Or tell them, you bring one cone in your daily life, what do you use? You bring a cone, you bring a cylinder, uh, you bring cuboids or better make it. Okay, how can you show a prism or a pyramid? Uh, you can show models or you can tell them to make models, 2D as well as 3D. Because the it's uh, you know a child makes a square, makes a rectangle, makes a triangle, the child will never forget. Otherwise, when a class one child is asked, better identify what is this, uh, instead of triangle, the child may say it's a square because they are not able to a mem this is memory, you know, the triangle is like that. But when they are making hands-on, they have made a triangle, they have made a, a cube, they are making a cuboid, they are making a circle, they are doing all this, then it will be for life. Okay, I have made a circle. So this is what hands-on experience is called. So when you make models, it remains for life. So the child will never forget what a triangle is because the child has made on their own. And bring uh, four or five spherical objects and compare it with circles. Now, many students are confused. What is a circle and what is a sphere? So, and make them understand between 2D and 3D. Two-dimensional figures, three-dimensional figures, okay? Because when we draw on the board, both are same. When we draw a circle and a sphere, there is no way of explaining it, okay? How much ever you try to explain on a board, we can't draw 3D figures. So, it will be a circle in both cases. So, how does a child understand? The child brings a ball from home. Now, you say, okay, this is your sphere. Okay, you cut a circle now, see see the difference. The child understands the difference between a circle and sphere. So uh, all these shapes need to be demonstrated. 
to the chamber. Otherwise, and then better is that they make on their own and bring it, or you can do it as a practical activity in your classes. Allow them to cut shapes, put it in there. You are doing a chapter on triangles. Let them cut beautiful triangles on from fluorescent sheet and paste it in your notebook. You know, it, it, the mean, it becomes more meaningful. Uh, you're doing chapter on circles. Allow them to cut circles and paste it in, your notebook, in their notebook. So it becomes uh, more, the learning process becomes more concrete. Right. So you're talking about different concepts of a real life. You talk about parallel lines. Okay. Uh, this is what parallel lines is. But when we show this parallel lines, okay, parallel lines never meet. You, you see the railway tracks. You give them an example like that. So everything need to be, so show, the, show them the railway track. See how the railway track is. The train keeps on moving. And you know, the wheels of the train are fixed at certain intervals. The distances remain same throughout. If you are uh, narrowing down to space, what will happen? The wheels will be out. So a rail track. This is how we explain parallel lines. And again, I will be going to GeoGebra and telling you how to explain on the board. Now, these are pictures which you can collect. Okay, so pictures can be collected of different parallel lines which exist in nature because you know everybody travels by train. Uh, they will be able to, that pictures speak, they say louder than thousand words. You are giving big, big explanations more than that, just show them a picture. Now, immediately, okay, they will understand parallel lines is a railway track, you know, two railway, they will never meet at any point. So they will understand what, how they will be able to define what parallel lines are for you because you have told them that parallel lines will never intersect. You have shown them the railway track and you have said that it is equidistant throughout. The wheels are placed at a fixed distance. You don't change the position of the wheels. So the train has to keep moving. So you can put a story there, right? Uh, for smaller kids, for older kids, of course, suitable examples can be taken. <clears throat> now, this is, uh, those who are in Delhi know this. Which place is this? Anybody from Delhi? Which place is this? Any guesses? Nehru place. <laughs> Nehru place. <laughs> ah, yes, ma'am. Nehru place is Nehru correct. Place. <laughs> Nehru place, sir. Yes, yes, absolutely. Nehru place. Okay, so this is, so depending on where you are teaching, you collect a picture from there. Now, I am in Delhi. I have collected a picture from Nehru place. Okay. And children are excited. Oh, sir, why is in maths class, sir is showing Nehru place. So what I want to show in this picture is, I am going to introduce in class six, what is the difference between a variable and a constant? In geometry, uh, not in algebra, we have three X. So X is a variable. Three is a constant, right? Three plus X. So when you are introducing that three plus x plus y so we have two variables right so there are constants and there are variables so variables keep changing so how do why is this picture important now we will not start introducing okay three is a constant and x is a variable y is a variable z is variable there can be many variables there can be many constants and give that lecture instead of that what i will do i will start projecting this picture and they will all get excited it could be something which they are familiar Maybe some, what is that, Disneyland or something which is, which they can connect uh, with students. Or you, it could be a local place in your uh, state or in your city, some famous thing. And now what am I going to do? Before starting the match topic, I'm going to tell them, can you identify what is the variable and constant in this place? What is the variable and what's the constant in this place? And then they're writing the reason. Okay, now what is the variable? Okay, I can see a man talking on the mobile uh, will he be present the next day also there? Or there will be some other person it, on a Sunday, it's a holiday, so nobody may be there. So what is the variable here? The things which change, which are not fixed. So the child understands, okay, yeah, that's right. That same man will not keep on talking there for the 365 days of the year. He will go away. Okay, so that's how we explain. What is the constant here? Okay, we are having that building in narrow place. That is a constant that has been here for past 50 years. And tomorrow when I go, that building of narrow place will be there, right? So this is how we explain to them. So what is the reason? Okay, now reason. This man is talking on the mobile phone in front. I can see this man talking. He is a variable. The reason is that tomorrow this, there could be some other person. He is not fixed. That man is not fixed. So similarly, there could be many variables and constants in a given picture, right? So it could be a traffic intersection where cars are coming. So the traffic light is your constant and the vehicle is the variable. Tomorrow, today, it may be a Toyota there, tomorrow it may be a BMW there, cars are different. So that's how we explain. Now, when we introduce our topic there, okay, now what is constant and variable? Ah, they've got that, uh, you know, uh, idea. Okay, this is variable and this is a constant. Instead of directly jumping, the majority of the problem that we face is that we have a tendency directly to jump to the uh, questions and the chapter. 
actually it's like a you know uh, let's say a hollywood movie when you see a hollywood movie you know the first half is normally boring you know why because they'll build the plot and then comes the excitement part so you have to build an excitement i would say make your classes like a hollywood movie the first part should be something which a visual treat for them or some as i told you write something upside down or uh, you know create some uh, interest in your class not the regular okay today children we are going to do a topic trigonometry in class uh, and some people also some children also and some teachers also are not this is a very tough topic <laughs> already the mindset is there this is a very tough topic but there is no choice you have to learn so you know we are giving our ideas to kids already now if you change that uh, <laughs> uh, that introduction okay today we are going to do a very interesting topic trigonometry you know it has got lots and lots of practical applications so before we do this i want you to see these visuals and then we will go to the chapter so uh, one period two period don't worry about you know what's going to happen that concept is very important because unless the concept the, with this picture of constant and variable nobody forgets what is a constant and variable otherwise you know again memorizing oh what was variable what was a constant they get mixed up so when they understand uh, the concept then they can apply it anywhere so that's the trick that is normally used to and so any topic that you take you need to spend some time in finding out more about that topic don't jump to the topic create some visuals now because as i told you children are going to get bored children are already bored very very fast span of attention is decreasing so we need more visuals in our classes okay it cannot be that 40 minute delivery children will wait we need to introduce sports we need to introduce art we need to introduce visuals and how are we going to do like this through games and through visuals songs and stories you know however old we are stories is always uh, a great 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 motivator for anyone yesterday we had a session with principals and one of the principal who spoke the first speaker prem kumar sir who was from kuwait he said that storytelling is one of the major 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 reasons of creating interest in students we can always start with stories okay and you will say today i am going to uh, tell you a story you have already captured the attention of the students you are not doing your regular maths you are telling them a story okay indirectly there will be some maths concept there but you start with a story okay so those, uh, for example the story of pi okay how was it discovered uh, by the greeks uh, archimedes discovered and what happened you know earlier there used to be the the pythagorean uh, sex you have to do a little bit of reading and anybody who used to disclose Uh, anything about irrational numbers they or rational numbers they used to be punished because the greeks were the people who were very uh, protective about their knowledge so they the, there was a sect called the pythagorean sect and uh, information should not go outside and anyone who shares information that was he was killed in fact a greek mathematician by the name of hipparchus he had leaked out a lot of information and he was killed but by because he leaked out the world knows today so you see when you add some stories like that not <laughs> on your own okay uh, you need to research so when we read about okay children are dumbstruck okay the, there is a secret society like this anyone who is sharing stories like this is put to death there was a greek mathematician by the name of hipparchus who shared uh, the information about rational and irrational numbers you know there is an excitement and then you introduce your topic okay this is what i'm going to do today is rational thanks to hipparchus who shared the story are uh, with the world that today we are studying this okay then songs and stories so lots of stories are there uh, in maths so don't think that you know stories have to be. historical background of any topic can be researched and found out in fact in many of the ncert books there there is a side note uh, which you can always google and find out more information there are lots of uh, infer, uh, songs which help us to teach now we know that pi Uh, it's a very uh, commonly used greek alphabet isn't it for finding out area of circle circumference cylinder everywhere it is pi pi uh, pi is there so what is this pi so to create interest in pi you know that it's a non terminating number and non repeating number so uh, how to remember digits some people are making songs out of it so they don't have to, uh, students don't have to remember the song but show them that p there is a uh, there is a the world record of remembering pi is i don't know thousands or 10000 uh, digits somebody has memorized that so many digits so create interest that people are memorizing the uh, digits of the value of pi how by creating songs so i think i have a song that i will be playing to you statistics uh, you know that children are they love to do a lot of reports report work statistics is something which 
is very applicable in daily lives. You talk about banking, taxation, simple interest, profit loss, census, score by offer. They are liking cricket. Okay, so suppose there's a cricket match. So you get involved in that. Okay, today uh, children yesterday did you watch the cricket match? Okay, today I am giving you some questions based on the cricket match. You captured their attention. Why? Because you have gone into something which they like. Yesterday did you see the cricket match between India and uh, Australia? Okay, how did Virat Kohli play? Okay, and now I am going to give you a question. You write down statistics. Okay, batsman number one, Virat Kohli scored this one, this scored, scored, and now you ask them question. Find out the mean, median, mode, or draw a graph of this. So it need not be questions from the book. When you start, your starting class has to be very, very. Uh, you know, the starting is very important. They say the first impression is the best impression, isn't it? That is very important. Whenever you start a class, it has to be so dynamic that children will love it. So any introduction, people should look forward. Oh, today is the introductory class because it's going to be very interesting. Because then the sort, uh, you know, the solving comes. The solving comes. They'll have to sort uh, by practice. But the introductory classes should be so interesting that people should look forward to your classes. And how many chapters do you have? Fifteen chapters, sixteen chapters. So you can easily make sixteen introductory classes for your year. Uh, isn't it and you can keep on improving it every year and those introductory classes are going to take you okay my introductory class for stats was good so i am able to capture their attention for the next four five class every time i'll bring in remember pirat kohli he scored this that was the highest and there was another guy rohit he scored this much you know what's the range highest minus lowest so he remembers okay virat kohli had scored highest this uh, rohit had scored lowest when you subtract the highest and lowest you get something called a range Okay, now this is when they see a cricket match, they will see all sort of graphs going there. Okay, this is called a frequency polygon, or this is called a line graph. This is called a bar graph. This is called a histogram. You can take live shots uh, from Google and show them. Okay, this you see in the match yesterday. Yesterday they were showing this comparison between the two teams. And when you relate like that to real life, they are going to take more interest. Otherwise, if it's a dry subject, okay, today we are going to learn about statistics. and you are talking about temperature humidity without showing any visuals to them and so create take the interest of the students and talk accordingly okay uh, so that is uh, about uh, statistics and other topics and as i said maths and music are so integrated okay uh, i will show you a couple of uh, 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 videos where uh, maths and music has been integrated and you can show it to your students you can google search you will find lots of other stuff so let's say there is something you are teaching about rational rational numbers and you say that pi uh, is a non terminating and non repeating number it goes on indefinitely now we can't uh, write down all that on the blackboard and even if you write you are just wasting time and you are not creating the uh, right message giving the right message uh, people will students will get bored because you are copying down numbers from 3.142857 like that but instead of that i will say okay there is a never ending number i will play a music for you now you just listen to the music and enjoy the children will now be more interested okay so i'm i'm going to play this song for you uh, just uh, let me know whether you are able to hear the audio and now asap science presents 100 digit and now okay the audio was there yes sir yeah okay so i'm going to play that so you can just, so before the class i am introducing uh, the, the you know pi as an irrational number because whenever we say pi is uh, uh, 22 by 7 or 3.14 the argument is sir 22 by 7 is rational 3.14 is rational so why is it irrational okay so let me show you why it is irrational let's let me play a song i am not uh, commenting about it now let me play the song okay so uh, one second then and all that you can tell them the importance of coordinates you are going to watch a movie you know you get a ticket and in the ticket what is written how do you find your place if there is no numbering there how will you find your seat okay everybody goes to you know movie so they will say sir it, there is an alphabet and there is a number so that is what coordinates is all about right so there is an alphabet and a number so you will be able to exactly find out where you are supposed to sit so c3 okay i know a b c c and 3 so similarly in your classrooms you can uh, develop this so history of maths always helps that is uh, my personal experience it will always help but we need to find out information and make some interesting things to the class 
of who is who gave these concepts you talk about roman numerals so you talk about the romans how they developed this system they tell some interesting facts about maths okay all the stuff which is written in the books that are there tell them interesting facts i'll show you some interesting facts just collection i had uh, i had done it for one school so those slides were ready so i think so, uh, uh, i can show you some slides of that also uh, some uh, you know like intriguing numbers you can talk about some uh, information about that topic any topic which is beyond the books they will not otherwise what will happen the excellent fellows they must have already done your chapter and they be sitting there they will know how to solve questions so it's not about solving questions okay maths is not about solving questions it's about going beyond that so if you don't go beyond that you're just doing uh, in hindi we call it the rattu tota he is memorizing and then vomiting after the exam you ask him he will not know that so sir exam is over and i have finished uh, i don't know the formula anymore so that's a common thing that we say maths and takshari like uh, they are fond of antakshari you know like uh, atlas they play one word and when you play one uh, the ending word you like to say something right so when you say let's say india then a ending then you say australia then another a then you will say antarctica like that it goes on no that game atlas it's called so same way for maths but the uh, the rule here is that you can use only mathematical terms nothing else so you can uh, 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 you can play this game of maths and antakshari where one child says one word of maths the next child will continue with the ending of that and it goes on like that you can uh, play that in the class and uh, crosswords crosswords can be created and you know children love crosswords and you can give them some hints and uh, you can create these crosswords for every chapter uh, wherever there are definitions involved and uh, this is the best way of learning for them because what is happening it's they are racking their brains what do you think will come here so when the racking of brain comes that is not memorization it's a recollection uh, based on what the hints that you have given there is a hint given there and that hint and the number of how many letters is that okay so both combination works for them and then they are able to do that so crosswords and antakshari is a good way of uh, games in the class that can be conducted compare and contrast they children always love to compare and contrast so how do they compare and contrast with the help of data which is collected okay so you can uh, uh, maybe it's it can be an individual exercise okay pt1 this was the score that you had english math they'll make five columns english math science sst pt2 this is what you scored pt3 this is what you scored now you give them some question so every child is doing this okay was there an increase in marks in english was there a decrease in, in this thing what is the average marks that you scored Uh, what is the range of marks that you have in pt1 so what is happening each child is doing something concrete on the data that he has collected if you want to do common things you can give a common chart okay this is what happened in class 7a during academic year 2020 okay this was roll number 1 this is roll number 40 this is the data that i am giving you project it on the screen or give them uh, right on the board whatever it is and tell them okay now compare and contrast who got the highest who got the lowest how many students got 60% and more they are all doing that on their own comparing and contrast the children love doing this comparing and contrasting because they are participating in that they are participating in that whenever children participate in an activity they find it interesting bring in real objects always if you walk into your classrooms empty handed the, uh, the interest is low but carry something very interesting oh, what they should always wonder what is that you know uh, uh, what is that uh, box that you are carrying what what is going to come out of that box that should be so it could be simple things that we use in daily life a pencil uh, a pen holder a pencil holder that you see because anything can be related to maths right so if you look at a pencil you can say that you know this uh, pencil if it is unsharpened it is a if an unsharpened pencil uh, the top and front is same so when the top and front is same what do you call such fig figures so you are explaining the uh, uh, something uh, like congruency and you are explaining uh, a concept of um, uh, prisms then i can say that this is what a prism is now when you sharpen the pencil you sharpen the pencil in the class now see now the top portion and the bottom portion have changed so it's no longer a prism so that is different so and then you know there are uh, questions based on it okay now you make a diagram there okay this is a cylindrical uh, pencil and uh, inside there is graphite you have brought the pencil and then the problem starts there is graphite inside now you give them imaginary dimension the length of the pencil is 15 cm okay and uh, the radius of this pencil is this much 
and there is graphite inside the radius of that is 1 mm now find out the volume of the graphite find out the volume of the wood so real life objects okay i have brought this thing today box here now and uh, you know so creating interest by bringing real life objects so if you want to go out of this thing uh, it can be this is simple things you can also bring in objects like a cycle or a, a laptop or a chair to make it more you know uh, because a cycle when you demonstrate uh, diameter radius it's very good because children all uh, smaller classes they all love to drive their uh, ride cycles no so when you bring in a cycle that itself is an excitement you are taking them to a cycle stand where normally the children park their cycles and then you are talking about radius okay radius is the distance from this point to this okay where the tire is that is your circumference so you are explaining concepts through something which they use cycle everybody or every child is using so what is going to happen they are going to relate it to real life so what is happening in between the triangle you see a shape can you identify that shape is it a triangle you are seeing a quadrilateral or are you seeing a pentagon you you can uh, do so many things okay so there is a two wheels of the cycle are the wheels of the cycle of the same dimensions if they are same then can we say they are congruent so concept of congruency come in comes in then the bars of the cycles are there are they all of uniform width what are the shapes so so many things that we can show with things that they use so whenever i am using if you talk about something which they don't use they will never understand you are talking about an aeroplane they will not understand because that is not in front of you and we don't see uh, closely or we might have seen very few times but a cycle or something like that which they see in a daily life they will be able to relate and understand better so the child will never forget okay this is radius okay from here ma'am has explained this is radius and he will be very happy the spokes okay how many spokes are there you count when it is divided into equal circles in higher classes we can teach about sectors and uh, other things then uh, we have a game called bombing the city okay this you must have uh, played uh, in many parties and all bombing the city is a very good concept to learn numbers uh, in the very small classes like class 1 2 3 and all when they are learning numbers okay class 1 now uh, the difficulty may be uh, somebody may be counting and the counting goes wrong because you know many children have the habit of counting on their fingers 1 2 3 4 5 6 like that and then there is a better way of counting is that you will give some objects some five pencils you will give and then you will ask them or five toffees 1 2 3 4 5 right you will do that now let's make this as a game what we can do is we the teacher will announce a particular number let's say the teacher will announce five so five means what happened the entire class has to make in groups of five so they will find they have to find four more friends and make a group of five so they will count okay every time they are forming a group 1 2 3 4 5 or four is there oh you come here you come here or you are six then you go away from here so they are adding or subtracting to make it five okay so you uh, the, that is very important to play this then you will say the number is now seven okay now they'll suddenly make groups of seven with uh, with each other the moment uh, the, it is only five they know that they we are only five two more has to be added to make it seven so you are talking uh, about simple addition and subtraction unknowingly okay unknowingly they are learning this not knowingly so you are making a group so first of all they get the idea of a numerical data that it is 5 or 6 or 3 or whatever it is plus they understand basic addition and subtraction so you are calling out a number 7 and if there are only two in that they know that there are only two so they need five more to make it seven so you know the children will get it you play three four time the children are unknowingly comes into the system so that is very important that many of these games are important because it comes unknowingly in the system uh create a geo board now a geo board is something like uh, you must have seen it's like a a, a board a, a wooden board and you uh, put uh, pins exactly at 1 cm intervals like for example on a graph paper if you i assume that there is a graph paper put those pins on every 1 1 cm so you will get a grid okay and you should do it on a uh, on a wooden board and put uh, the geo boards are ready made available also uh, otherwise it can be created by putting pins after every 1 uh, 1 cm you can create one and then what happens on a geo board with the help of rubber band you can connect one uh, nail to the other or one pin to the other to make different figures so you connect three pins you will get a triangle you connect four pins you will get a quadrilateral you connect five pins you will get a pentagon so they are creating different different shapes so on a geo board you can they can make a triangle 
quadrilateral pentagon <laughs> hexagon heptagon octagon all this can be created and the child will be able to uh, on this geo board they will be able to play with shapes so on the if there is a geo board and uh, you are asking the students that okay now everybody make a pentagon so he will take the rubber band connect five pins so he knows that a pentagon is a figure which has got five sides and five vertices and that's important uh, to learn that's it five pentagon is five hexagon is six right <sighs> uh yeah, i think somebody's mic is on yeah match through sports now without sports uh, especially in the elementary classes children will get bored of course the older students sometimes it becomes difficult for us to take them to the ground and all but if you are ever getting them chance to take them out learning through sports is the best way of learning maths so any sport that they play whether it is cricket or football introduce mathematical concepts in that okay so uh, uh, for example when they are taking a bat uh, you ask them you know what is the length of this or what is the weight of this estimation is very important or can you measure the length of this ground or can you prepare a track field now making a track field is a very challenging mathematical exercise because different tracks have to be prepared equidistant these are really challenging problems that you can give to high school students now uh, the best students may not be able to design a track because he will find that he is going wrong he will not be able to uh, calculate the distances that are equal because when you are running a 400 meter race you the uh, you know all people don't start in the same line so your distance has to be same when you are creating that circle so calculating that so uh, just i am giving you an example uh, this i have already told ball games for primary kids uh, always it's a hit create puzzles and mazes you can buy uh, they can buy a lot of straws or you get all these stuff okay where they can connect this and make different different shape you will be surprised at the imagination they will be future architects and designers believe me so these sets are available if your school is interested you they can buy Uh, in uh, there is an organization called jodo gan i am not promoting that by the way but their products are very good jodo gan innovative mathematical products so they have ganit malas they have these crossword puzzles mazes which the children can really build and they can create beautiful designs okay jodo gan it's called you can do a google search uh, and you can order products not very expensive but they are very good all these whatever i am talking about i have personally tried it out that all these uh, cubes they have then uh, Uh, estimation things models they have this puzzles and mazes all this they can have or you can also make this slide swings and seesaw when you are good, when the kids are playing in the uh, uh, in the uh, in the field then if they are slide or swing or seesaw give them examples of how maths is related to that also like okay the game spirit is over oh you have come after sir we are very tired we don't want to. okay so who who are sitting on the seesaw okay now you see the person who has got more weight is coming down so try to talk about when there is a, any uh, they are coming after a game spirit or you are personally present try to connect those games or whatever they have done into your class project based learning very very important now this is going to become part and parcel of the nep any concept pick up one or two good topics and allow them to discover more on that so project based learning with the help of a project they should understand that concept in and out not that they are searching from google and writing something which is hands on which they are doing on their own so that they will be able to uh, uh, give some concrete uh, understanding of that particular topic patterns and sequence very very important this is a very important aspect of creativity creating pattern sequence or series and i'm going to show what one of my students ankan mitra in the next session we are going to log off shortly in the next session i am going to shortly show uh, uh, what he is doing with these pattern and you might think this is what creating pattern what is there about pattern but you will be amazed he is one of the best origami architect in the world right now because he took a liking for patterns create puzzles like this now see this is a simple wooden block you can create this with paper also just take a square piece and you just design any with triangles trapeziums quadrilaterals parallelograms you can cut it into different shapes give it to the child and say now these are seven pieces or eight pieces whatever it is now you combine this and make it into a square one period you can do this so the child has to rack his brain how to you know mix these seven pieces and make it into a square these type of puzzles are i was talking about creation of puzzles 
so this i hope you it is clear that you can make a puzzle like this give it to the students and they will enjoy create notice boards okay you should have a notice board uh, general things we always see for maths you should have a notice board uh, give duty to the students if they find anything interesting about maths put it on uh, put it on the board uh, lots of information is very important uh, to generate interest is important that a notice board is there so every time the child is coming to the school they need to see that notice board and see what is there in the notice board okay make it very creative okay somebody has made some good project uh, you put it up on the notice board somebody has uh, uh, written something or there is an article that the child has brought you need to show that to the students so notice boards is a very important uh, aspect of uh, bringing about life in the classroom uh integrate other subjects now uh, there is a lot of emphasis that we should not go especially up to class 8 those who are teaching 1 to 8 we need to integrate with other subjects at least one or two projects to promote because they should not uh, this is maths this is saying that separation they say no hard separation of subjects should be avoided in the new nep so that's what we need to integrate as math science so that's why i gave you the example of the seesaw and swings and all that because there is a lot of science involved there so try to involve all that so the teachers will uh, be able to connect uh, to the students because it's related to all the subjects otherwise if you are isolated from other subjects uh, it's it's just not going to be very meaningful so experience this is all different topics all together i'm sure you've done a lot of this so i'm not talking much about these cooperative learning you must have been doing this you know there is one child who does exceptionally well the other child is not so good in maths so there has to be some make learning groups so learning groups is okay you group uh, this uh, uh, a this roll number 1 to 5 you have one group this is the team leader and you uh, create a learning experience for them if there is somebody weak uh, the they will automatically be taken care of the other group members so cooperative learning is important no man is an island we cannot survive alone we need help as teachers also we are not all equal no some are very good teachers some are average teachers some are not so good teachers but we require but we need to help out each other okay the good teacher should not say that okay i am not going to share any information with anyone at the same time the person who is not the up to, uh, average and wants to improve they should not hesitate from taking help from a person who is better than you you need to have a mentor who is better than you then only you can improve otherwise what will happen if you have ego issues and say that i am the best learning can never happen right so let's forget all our egos and let's always try to learn think out of the box now uh, uh, origami uh, is a beautiful example of how stories can be told now you are talking about a, a elementary child you start with the story you bring a small frog okay that you see the picture there made out of paper uh, how how is it made by origami you no know? so origami techniques are there and you see the all the mathematical shape they are made up of triangles and other uh, this thing uh, other mathematical shapes so you say okay say this is the frog this is coming now do you know how to make this we are making this from this this uh, pieces of paper or this is how we fold it think out of the box make a make a story out of it and then what will happen they will uh, try to make it they will understand the concept better tangrams i already you already know uh, giving different shapes you can make animals birds human beings anything out of tangrams so i'm not uh, going deep into that because you are already aware of that celebrate special days this is very important that you celebrate a maths day a pi day okay uh, many uh, 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 one of the schools had invited me to celebrate their national maths day i think some teachers of that school are already here i think so you know so they celebrated a ramanujan uh, uh, you know birthday they had celebrated that so it gives you something okay that we are doing something for maths a pi day can be done on 14th march okay it's called a you know why it's called a pi day because 3.14 that is the value of pi approximate value so 14 march is celebrated so children get oh they they, they may not even know that uh, 14 march is called pi day and you celebrate you put some competitions there and so on give some interesting information okay 10 to the power 100 is called google okay google is a huge number so 10 to the power 100 is called so information like this i'm just going fast because these are all information which you can what is it in english we say no i am coming in a jiffy what is the meaning of a jiffy jiffy is actually mathematically 100th of a second okay 100 i am coming in a jiffy means you are going you are coming out you are coming very fast so i'll be back in a jiffy you know you say that normally in english language those were english teachers they will know better or it's a common phrase that we use 
these are interesting facts. Do you know that the letter A comes only once in the numbers from 1 to 1000? A we don't use at all in 1 to 1000 at all. So where does it come? It doesn't come in 1, 2, 3, 4. Isn't it surprising? A, which is a vowel, which is a common alphabet, doesn't come in 1, 2, triple nine. It's coming only in 1,000. A is coming only in 1,000, not in any other. So the symbol for division, which we call, is called an obelisk. So these are all interesting information which we can give. Okay? Roman numerals we can uh, uh, represent every number except for the number 0. That means the Romans did not have the concept of 0. Uh, it is believed that Indians have given that, uh, 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 that concept. So these are interesting information. Uh, golden ratio in nature. In nature, you will see a lot and lot of concepts where, about the golden ratio, which proves that God is the greatest mathematician. So I'm just showing you some slides to explain that. You can show this, that, you know, they will say, sir, where is maths used? Everywhere in nature, we will have this mathematical uh, combination or the golden ratio, right? So golden ratio is uh, in um, Greek alphabet represented by phi, uh, P-H-I. And uh, you can talk about mathematicians like Leonardo Fibonacci was an Italian mathematician. Look at the series there, one, one, two, three. What is special about this series? When you add one and one, you are getting two. Then one plus two is giving three. Two plus three is five. Three plus five is eight. It goes on Fibonacci series. And in nature, golden ratio, you will get lots and lots of examples. In graphic designing, in art, geometry, uh, even the most beautiful structures on the uh, uh, earth like Taj Mahal is built on the golden ratio. Surprising. Now look at our body parts. Everything is based on the golden ratio. If you look at your palm size to uh, the uh, this distance from your palm to that where you fold, then that is the ratio 1 is to 1.6. That means this part is 1.6 times the size of your palm. Similarly, the Mona Lisa, one of the greatest uh, paintings by Leonardo da Vinci is considered one of the best paintings is based on the golden ratio. Uh, that means the breadth of the face is, uh, when you compare to the length of the face, is in the ratio 1 is to 1.6. The Taj Mahal is based on the golden ratio. See the beauty of the golden ratio. Everywhere in nature, the beauty is in the uh, golden ratio. So if you look at the length of the, uh, the arches or the doors or the windows, that will be 1.6 times the breadth. And that's the concept of beauty. And this is everywhere in nature. So tell them all this, they will get interested. The egg which is naturally found is golden ratio. Compare, tell them, see the width and the length and compare that, that will come uh, 1 is to 1.6 approximately. Similarly, flowers, cocoons, you know, the silkworm, everything that you see is based on the golden ratio. You, uh, everyone knows the symbol, right? What is this? The symbol is? Apple. Apple. Uh, Apple uh, company. Ah, yes, Apple the Apple company. company, because there's a bite taken. In fact, this bite is designed, this, this has been designed, uh, designed on the golden ratio. Now, why couldn't they make a full uh, apple? And why did they uh, design like this? Any Anyone knows that? Why did they have, why couldn't they, it's an apple company, why couldn't they take a full apple? They could have taken a full apple and shown, but what is the significance of this picture? Many of you use iPhones and iPads, and Hi. you've seen this. Yes, anybody? The bite. Ah, yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's the bite. Okay, so you've taken a, you've taken a bite. So B Y T E is also a technical a computer language, no one byte. So the bite, they have integrated that. And the whole picture is based on the golden ratio. Handsome men of Hollywood, uh, George Clooney, Brad Pitt, Bradley Cooper, if you see all, uh, they're all based on the golden ratio. That's why they're so handsome and attractive. Okay, just like the Mona Lisa painting. So the human body itself, when it is uh, the closest you are to the golden ratio, they say the more handsome or beautiful you are, right? So uh, if you compare, there are, uh, I think, more than hundreds of golden ratio in your body part. So these are some of the things that is there. You can do a Google search, you will find all this. So people can make projects on this and people are using this in real life, okay? So that I will be showing you shortly. So distant length of the lips to the width of the nose, 1.6. Human face length to the width is 1.6. Human biceps to hand is 1.6. Shoulder to knee and knee to toe is one percent. So innumerable. I've just given you a random stuff here. And as Srinivas Ramanujan said, an equation means nothing to me unless it expresses a thought of God. So everything that you find in nature is actually in the golden ratio. So it's a beautiful topic about real life application in maths. Food is something which children love, no? Food, majority at least. There are very few people who ate. So a lot of questions can be developed on food. 
you can develop questions on pizza and cakes for example okay i'm showing you one example this is something very interesting that i found out if you if you notice a pizza is a circle or we can say it's a cylindrical if you consider the height it comes in square boxes and it is divided into triangles so you see the mathematical shapes involved that it's a it's a circle if you look at 3 uh, 2d it's a circle and what is happening it comes in a square box and then what happens you are dividing into triangles or if you look at it in three dimensionally uh, it's a, it's a cylinder actually because it's got a small height and then what are you doing it comes in a uh, cubical box it's not a square it's a cube if you look at three dimension and what are you doing you are dividing into sectors and if you understand pizza uh, let's imagine that the pizza has got a thickness of a and the radius is z what is the formula of a circle it uh, it is pi r square and what is the height h so actually if you find the volume of the cylinder what is it pi r square h so pi into radius is z so what will happen z into z and what is the height they have taken a so pizza so something which will help them to remember okay the uh, this is just a uh, it's just to make it interesting okay it's not that uh, anything very um, uh, logical behind it but at the same time it's a very interesting that uh, a pizza if suppose we are taking a pizza assuming that the radius is z and the height is a then the formula pi r square h when you use you are going to get the volume as pizza right so uh, uh, we can uh, bring in all these concept of food because children love uh, all these uh, topics of food Uh, similarly, we can take up uh, uh, topics like uh, I've got one on cakes. Okay, networks and pattern. This uh, I'll be showing you some real life examples. Okay, fractals. Now, this is I'm not going to go in detail. I want to show you some uh, things which um, people are actually doing in life. Fractals are repetitive patterns. Now, why are repetitive patterns important? Because that is the essence of design. Now, if uh, if you are creating a building or anything. you need symmetry in that building for architects this is a very uh, a topic which is very close to that we repeating a process over uh, same so if you are wearing a sari and what is happened your pattern is all different here and there it will not look good but if your border is same okay there is some circle triangle pattern then what happens is that it looks beautiful right so creating patterns uh, fractals so this is the student i was talking about he is a genius okay his name is ankan mitra you can google for him and look at the things that he is doing with progressions and series i mean this is his uh, his creation okay he is a genius as i told you he is one of the most renowned origami architects in the world he started with an architect but then he got interested in origami and in fact he had done a session with me uh, uh, seven months back some of you may have attended that session uh, of that also uh, when ankan was with me and uh, so he as a student he was intrigued by all these and then look at the creation you will be amazed by what the things that he does uh, the the creation is world famous he goes to china paris uh, god knows where all europe us and this is the products that he has created and he says sir everything is based on uh, uh, mathematics I, I, it's all based on symmetry now if suppose he is making all this and there is a change in the patterns it will not be beautiful right so you see there is a symmetry in this look at the amazing stuff he is doing this is just i am sharing a sample okay you can google about him you will find uh, unbelievable products that he has made i mean how uh, that he is actually doing with paper he is doing with steel he is doing creating this for buildings now uh, which are uh, to produce designs right so see the amazing stuff i mean it's unbelievable that people can actually do this all through folding activities so uh, in fact uh, he had conducted a origami workshop sometime back and uh, you know thousands of tickets were sold uh, with, as soon as he launched this so he is as i told you is world famous so uh, he, this is how you know uh, that creation of interest and patterns so somebody must uh, may be asking you in class Uh, what do we do with all these patterns see this is the examples in front of you okay this is another example okay just give me a minute lagade lagade bakke lagade charger ke lagana pack pe nikal ke somebody's mic is on can we mute that please okay <clears throat> yeah so as i told you uh, now see somebody has created music uh, and connected it to patterns so i'm just playing this uh, for you 
So this is a pattern, a visual pattern, again based on symmetry and patterns. Yeah, so you see, uh, uh, even things like music can be done, uh, uh, we can create patterns. So the children have to understand the importance of pattern, fractals, and all that. Create opportunities for friendly competitions. It's important that there is competition. Friendly competition, not for winning or losing. Friendly competition. And what is going to happen? Okay, you do this question, this team uh, does this, this role does this question, or which let's see which row wins. Okay, or you set timers for personally. Okay, you give a question and uh, you ask the students to note down the time. And uh, okay, first question you uh, you did it in three minutes. Second question you did in five minutes. Tell them to total it up. So what are they doing? They're not only solving the question, they're also adding it up. So it could be according to the level of the children, the questions can be easy level, uh, tough or whatever it is, right? So make uh, competitions like this and they always like to compete with themselves or with others. But again, uh, it's not for winning or losing. It's a, it's a, it's something to create interest. Okay, <clears throat> uh, introduce STEM projects. That's what what does STEM stand for? Science, technology, engineering, and math. So as I told you, when you are having a, a, a word problem or something like that, then what is going to happen? Uh, integrate other things. Okay, make it uh, cross curricular, not only math. So when you are giving a project, STEM project, tell them to identify a problem of the class. Okay. So uh, what is the problem of the class? Now, let's say I'm just giving you an example. Now, uh, during COVID times, you just make a situation. A government is not allowing all the 40 kids to come to this class. So you need to create a seating arrangement such that each student is separated by a minimum distance of three feet. Now, ask the students to plan out. How will the students sit? So they will make their plan, seating plan. Okay, student one will sit here and then three feet. So if you give the dimensions of the class, okay, uh, sir, we can do it this way. Three people are sitting on this uh, row, then another three. Somebody will say, we can do it around the corners. Somebody will say that, you know, the different, different things, uh, ideas will come up. So this is one practical way of introducing this. You are giving a real life problem and they are making a seating arrangement. So I'm just giving an example. You can always, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, uh, add or subtract things on your own. Look at the cake. Anything which is circular, have you ever wondered why it is always cut from the center? Why not from the sides? Anything which is circular, whether it's a pizza or a cake, okay? Uh, why? So if they are bringing a cake on your birthday or something, or uh, or you are taking a cake one day and tell them that uh, in your birthday party, why do you cut it like this? There is a reason, or they just it's it, it's a tradition. Uh, anybody knows uh, why is, why are circular objects cut only from the center and not you know just like we cut uh, rectangular or uh, square objects? To get the equal parts. Ah, yes, ma'am. To get equal parts. Otherwise, there is no way of getting. So, example, for example, if I cut the uh, pizza, uh, you know, horizontally or vertically, who will eat all the sides? I want to get the center part, right? So, uh, they will say, okay, you, you will cut it like this. So, everyone has equal portions to make it homogeneous. And you can introduce concept of fractions and, you know, parts, all this one fourth, what is one third and all that with food. So, when, when you bring in food, uh, cycle, Objects like that, which they are pizza, which something which they are using and eating and all, you know, there, there is an excitement. Hopscotch match. This is also very good if, uh, for smaller kids. That is, uh, you must have seen, uh, you know, this, that you need to uh, hopscotch, you know, that game. No, that uh, So they will skip on one number. So you have to make a grid. They will skip on one number. Let's say they will skip on number five. And then the next, they have to skip on an operation. So five, they will uh, jump on into, then they will... Uh, jump on another number, three, five into three, then they will jump on equal to, and then whatever is the answer, they have to jump on that number. 
right? So that's hopscotch match. Then you have to introduce different different symbols. So you have to put a grid there. So the child has to really think of jumping on one number, then the operation, then the second number, then the equal to, and then uh, the final answer. So that is called hopscotch match. It works well with again elementary students. If it's a double digit number, they will jump together, where the right leg and left leg together. So they, if they jump. One leg is on one, another leg is on five, so the number becomes fifteen. So fifteen, they jump into the next into, then they go to a single number or a double number. So depending on that, then equal to the answer. So that that's called a hopscotch grid. Probability and ratio can always be demonstrated in class. Okay, just like tossing a coin. When you toss a coin, what will come? Somebody will say head. Somebody will say tail. Okay, now you do one thing. You toss it ten times and you record your observation. You can. Uh, or you throw a dice see what is happening or how many boys are there how many girls are there okay find the ratio of boys and girls don't give a problem on the board tell them give them that example find the ratio of boys and girls in the find how many match periods do you have in a week how many english periods do you have a week okay now can you all find me the ratio of maths and english they will do it okay so they look into the timetable there is something some activity is there not a, a, a question from the uh, school book so match period english period they are making that uh, notes and then they are comparing so they learn about ratios building blocks one of the best things that i have seen children doing is building blocks again elementary kids building blocks uh, what is going to happen they will build it's called the 1 meter dash so first of all there are two things one they should build it to 1 meter 1 meter is not easy because by the time it comes to 70 cm 80 cm it will collapse okay so first they have to estimate how much is 1 meter so they will uh, the you will have to say stop at 1 meter so if they are stopping at 70 that means he doesn't understand the concept of 1 meter and the moment it goes in height what happens it fall, crashes down so the, uh, the what is the thing most people in order to do it fast will make one block over the other but what is the technique in this building block is that your base has to be strong unless the base is strong you will not be able to make the building block okay so you are teaching them unknowingly the basic concept of engineering and architecture that your base is strong then your building can rise to a certain height otherwise you are putting one one block it will all collapse and secondly you are teaching about estimation what is one meter okay so they will know exactly more or less how many blocks is it required to stop so these are activities by which we can uh, do then case studies now these case studies are very important these i have prepared for senior classes for uh, for especially for class 10 but i am just showing you that how you can prepare case studies for any class uh, any concept can be introduced through a case study okay so for example okay shadow formation now again i am i am talking about class 10 okay look at the shadow formed here this is a, a vertical uh, stick and the shadow formed is 42 feet now can you tell me uh, the shadow of that tree is this much can you find out the height of the tree so they will use similar triangles they will use trigonometry and then they can you can you can give questions okay so this is what i gave you a question so what did i show them i showed them a shadow and i told them okay by looking measuring the shadow you can actually find out the height of the tree and now you will say okay height of the tree you measured now with the shadow of the school building can you tell me what will be the height of the school building now it becomes really interesting for them because without actually taking a tape and they are measuring the height of the school building now you will tell them see this is how even height of mount everest can be measured with the help of trigonometry with the help of similar triangles so this is how we introduce case studies so i'm just going hurriedly because this may not be relevant to all classes but i'm giving you some examples this is pattern formation in every handloom you will find pattern information uh, formation you could be a bed sheet it could be a saree it could be any fabric it could be anything that you find bring it to class and show if there is any pattern there show it and you ask five questions on that okay what do you observe what is this circle inside the triangle known as you make imagine it but bring that object bringing that object and then put five questions on that okay now sepensky triangle this is uh, we are doing about triangles now if you find some interesting concepts about triangles bring it now he was a, a polish mathematician a person from poland and then he uh, what is the concept just he is joining uh, the midpoints of the similar triangles repetitively and that is called a sepensky triangle so we give questions on that okay Hello and welcome so, to my new video. How to draw a Sapinski triangle? You can just see it's a simple concept. Step. The Sapinski triangle is a famous fractal. A fractal is a shape that can repeat itself at any scale of magnification or reduction. To draw this triangle, I start by drawing an equilateral triangle. 
a triangle where each side is of equal length. You could use a ruler for your straight lines, or you could just do it by eye. Next, I draw a dot at the halfway point of each side of this first triangle. I then join these three dots together to make a new upside down triangle in the center. Plus, by doing this, I've also made three new triangles, one in each corner. Next, I find the three halfway points to the bottom right triangle and draw three dots and then join them to make a new set of triangles. I repeat this process again and again. I move on to repeat this process for every upright triangle that I create. Okay, so I can just play a video like that and then I can go to the question. Okay, now can you tell me how many triangles are there in this figure? How many congruent triangles are there? How many similar triangles are there? What will be the ratio? So what happens when you, that video, when you are showing, it takes the interest of that. So any, you will get plenty of videos. That video can be played and you can generate interest. And then you can give five questions. So in every class, whatever is the concept that you're introducing, bring a video and play it first or bring, take an activity and do that. And then you give the questions instead of just coming to the class. Okay, students, today I'm going to do this. Take out your notebook and start doing this. You know, So that's how we do. So other, other, I'm just sharing you some, uh, uh, this is now a video on uh, how to find the area of a circle. Gives you the area of a circle. But where does pi r squared come from? First, we'll draw a circle and fill in its area. Next, we will divide it into large equal parts and arrange them in a rectangular formation. As you can see, it barely resembles a rectangle. So next, we will divide the circle into small equal pieces and we will arrange them in the same manner. You can see that it appears more like a rectangle. So if we divide the circle into even more smaller pieces, you can see that every time the shape becomes more like a rectangle. So how small must we divide a circle? So like this, I can, I, I can show a video because instead of just telling area of circle is pi r square, how did we get it? So that video, when I show it, the children are able to understand that, okay, when I cut this circle into infinite parts, then this is what happens. The circumference is equal to the, uh, the length becomes half of the circumference and the radius becomes the breadth. So that is why length into breadth. You know, you can correlate all that. So uh, this is a, now everybody is, uh, uh, you know, uh, very interested about sports. Now, who is the sportsman who is coming first? Who is this? <laughs> yes, Usain Bolt. Okay, so children are already excited. Usain Bolt, Usain Bolt, the fastest runner in the world. Okay, so I am I want to give a question and I am thinking of Usain Bolt. So see how I have added this as a case study. And then there's Usain. De Grasse, at 21 years of age, the youngest man in the final. Ben Matey, carrying the hopes of Cote d'Ivoire, and Johan Blake, Bolt's fellow Jamaican. It's been a moment that has been 120 years in the making at the modern Olympic Games. Is Usain Bolt about to rewrite the record books again? Gatlin got a good enough start. Bolt was a bit slow to begin. He's got some work to do. Gatlin's in front. Bolt stretching out now. He's coming after him. He's immortal now. You so 
Okay, so I have created some interest in us because I know the you know you should feel the pulse. So what are these interested? Okay, if they they are interested in cricket or something like that. So I can bring in cricket clippings. I can add questions. So here I have made a question. Okay, four runners are starting this this. I made a question on coordinate geometry. Now what is going to happen after five seconds? I have made a question like that. Given five. So idea is what I have created an interest and based on that I am solving my purpose of teaching them coordinate geometry. so i have made innumerable questions like this this is about probability okay i'm just uh, going fast now this is another example like they see lot of monuments outside okay so this is the gold gumbas so you tell about the gold gumbas it's the tomb of king mohammad adil shah now if you look at the shape the bottom portion is a cube on top we have a hemisphere so then you give some introduction about that okay then this is something which is real life okay now this is the question before you now tell me what is this what is this what is this if i want to paint this i want to plaster this uh, then what will be? i have made questions based on that so first is a real life situation connecting it to real life how if i want to paint how much money will it take okay that's something real so they need to calculate so i will give them the dimensions uh, on arithmetic progressions you can make innumerable uh, as per your class okay so this is i have given a a, a flower a petals you know the arrangement of the flower, flower petals on the first row there are these mini petals second is this third is this so it becomes a progression then you ask some questions based on that then this is questions based on linear equations okay so a, a person goes to the market buys this this three books and five pens which graph is do you think is correct you know so questions like this can be developed so uh, that's what i said that every uh, thing that you do has to especially the introduction part i would say lay great emphasis on that and then you need to take your classes with case studies you need to bring in objects to your class you need to involve the students and make it very very interesting so with this i conclude that uh, maths is definitely a gift to mankind as maths teachers i think uh, there are some teachers who say or uh, uh, when am i going to retire you know the, and uh, they accept the fact that you know maths is tough and boring so let's change as maths teachers let's change that image that maths is not boring or uh, it's actually the most interesting so uh, when the new academic year starts or something uh, our maths classes should be the most interesting because that is actually